Good morning, my friends. Roger Montfalls University. Really, really serious, serious, serious. And uh, I mean serious. Now, if this guy is right and Stephanie Snuff is right, we got issues. So we want to address this. I want to see, is she right? Is this guy right? Here's what he has to say. Somebody sent me this this morning. Now, I have very good friends who have, and a lot of people do, there's a lot of autism. There's a lot of issues with with motor neuron diseases. There's a lot of issues with with all kinds of chronic illness. I mean, just everything now. So, why is this happening? And why has it festered so badly? Are we missing something? And I think we are. So let's let's hear what he has to say, which, and I'll go on from there. I got a lot to say. <laughs> Here it goes. Physicians, you know, when we're, uh, we're facing a crisis of neurological diseases, I, I'd just like to give you some statistics on that. So, the, uh, the current world population in the Western countries is expected that half of us, half of us will die either with or of Alzheimer's disease or related brain uh, destruction. Half of us uh, that are listening to this will die with or of uh, degenerative uh, neurological illness. Uh, that's a current statistic too. I'll let you continue, but that's a current statistic, uh, Dr. Klingart. That that number is constantly increasing, still, correct? Oh, and and we're in an exponential curve with that. That means. Uh, and my contention is we have no idea why, none whatsoever, and we're never going to know until we have a database. But I'm going to let him go on. I don't want to get too upset about this, but I get upset about it. All right, here goes. In, in five years, it will be two-thirds, and uh, in less than 10 years, it's expected by 2028, there will be all of us. And so we have the similar curve with autism. Something interesting happened there. So the rates of autism doubled every five years. And the U.S. Uh, and the forces behind our government got concerned about that. Should we disclose that to people or not? And so what happened is that we simply redefined what autism is and took a lot of people, at least half the children off the spectrum and renamed the illnesses. You know, there is now pervasive developmental disorder and there, there is about 20 new names that were invented. So suddenly it looks like uh, the curve of new cases of autism is decreasing, but it's not decreasing because there is less. Um, it's decreasing because we renamed it simply the condition and so when you Google it, uh, you don't find the scary increase. You know, uh, Stephanie Senner, one of the main mentors that I have MIT. Uh, yeah. Yeah, from MIT, she uh, calculates that between 2028, so this is only nine years from now, and 2032, uh, all boys born uh, will be on the autistic spectrum, all of them, not just some of them, but all of them. That means uh, it's going to be spelling the end of civilization. I mean, I'm. I, if this is true, we got some serious issues here. Now, all right, before I go any further, I, I, she could be 100% right in every single syllable out of her lips. However, until we have a database, in my belief, she is guessing now, which I have no problem with that. Somebody's got to start somewhere, but we need this database. She could be totally correct. Now, uh, here's what she has to say. Let's listen for a minute or two. Plus glutamate equals autism. That's her claim. Um, um, so here's an outline of what you're going to hear. I'm going to start with a brief introduction to glyphosate. Um, I'm then going to talk about glyphosate and the gut. And then I'm going to talk about mouse models of autism, which is something I've gotten very interested in lately because we can learn a lot about human autism by studying these mice. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about vaccine toxicants, of course the vaccine antigen, but also all the extra ingredients that are in vaccines and how that relates to autoimmune disease. Uh, then I'm going to specifically have a section on aluminum in vaccines and connect that also with glyphosate. Aluminum and glyphosate are synergistically toxic. Uh, I'm then going to have a whole section on MMR, and in particular about what I find very disturbing is the fact that we have found glyphosate contamination in the MMR vaccine, um, and then finally we'll have a summary. 
Okay, once again, I have no issues with the things she's saying. However, I do know that aluminum is in the skin. And I don't know if they know where these things normally collect in your body and are usable in your body and are supposed to be in your body. You know, aluminum, they put it as an antagonist in these vaccines to, to, to beat up your immune system to get it more reactive. That's, the, the, that's why they put this aluminum in there. And, uh, you know, they're squirting it right into your bloodstream and it's you know you have membranes and t tissues and mucus and so forth they're supposed to protect you from these these invasions um, so some people get sick some people don't we, we need to focus in why why is this I mean here just look at this for one second right why do some people not get sick I mean she's saying that everybody in the whole world is going to be sick pretty soon. Well, maybe that's true. I can't dispute that. With the, with, the, with the information we have now, not a single person can confirm that or dispute it. Now, everyone's different. Absolutely. Is aluminum always bad? It's in your body. Every single molecule that exists, an element that exists, almost, as far as I can determine, is supposed to be in your body. And these specifically the transition metals are absolutely required and are probably these rare earth metals because they have ability to absorb electrons in extremely varied ways, which means they can become interactive with all the molecular chemistry in your body. Now, is it good or is it bad? I don't know. But you don't know either. And she doesn't know either because nobody's got a database. So. The body tissues vary greatly. Your skin is uh, way different than your eyeballs and your your uh, testicles and every bit of skin and things in you is so different it's unbelievable. And I have a book that is so detailed that I understand these things as well as anybody now. Because they, 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 everyone, everybody now is so focused on one little thing, one other little thing. I have all of the biological material from these soft tissue fossils that I have studied. And I understand this very, very well. Tissues are all different throughout the body. The chemistry is different. So how do they know what's going to affect what? I, they don't, as far as I can determine. And every single bit of tissue in your body is protected by a coating. That coating is called a membrane. That membrane is almost all of them that I know of are infused with some type of bacteria. Some way of keeping that that membrane flexible, reactive, slimy, which means it's it becomes uh, hydrophobic, I believe, which pushes all materials that are trying to invade. Yeah. All right, she goes into a lot of chemistry and a lot of um, you know, pretty impressive stuff. I, and again, I have no, no fight in me against her. What I have a fight in me against is the fact that they're just guessing. Right now, it's, I don't care what she comes up with. It's a guess because of this. We don't know what your body or my body is when it's healthy. Nobody does it. I know of. If you could, come, if you could show me these things, I would love to see them in a in a database form that's searchable by your chemistry of your body, your age, your ethnic, your sex, all that stuff. Now, what is your blood chemistry? All the metals, minerals, and etc. in your body, every bit of them. Do you know how much iridium is in you? No. Uranium? No. But it is there. There's gold in you. There's all that stuff. And if it's not there, I can tell you right now, you are going to have some form of a problem because those are transition metals and rare earth metals that have enormous amounts of reactivity in them. Now, and they are created or harvested by bacteria. So what do we want? What about your fecal chemistry? What's in there? We don't know about that either. I don't, I don't know about what's in everybody's feces. They should know what the biology of it is. What is going, what are you pooping out? What kind of bacteria is in there? What kind of Leftover foods and things like that. What is the norm? What is the not the norm? What is coming out? You have to know. Right? And that's where a lot of you, you'll find 
problems with your leaky gut. May you may have some kind of uh, emanations from that, or whatever you call it. Some effluents come out of those areas that you would detect in the the biology of this fecal chemistry. Now, what what about the enzymes? Enzymes in your body are things that go out and they break up molecules and they harvest molecules and they do chemistry. That's what they are. They're just little chemistry sets. They don't. Uh, they're not alive, but they are produced primarily by bacteria. So we have to determine what enzyme is created by what bacteria. I don't think they know that. I, I don't know if anybody knows that, but I'd like to know it myself. <laughs> then, so in other words, enzymes are absolutely critical. You can't break down the products. You can't get. You can't use them can't use them. And if you can't break down the products that are being attached, like she says, the aluminum is being attached to the glyphosate, it's passing these blood barriers, it's being collected in tissues that it should not be collected in, you have to get in there and take it out of there, maybe. Maybe something does it. Maybe just something goes in and takes it right out. That you can't get to it unless you have these transition metals and things I'm talking about, or these enzymes, or these bacterias. We don't know any of this stuff in a database. And here's the deal. What's in your breath chemistry? you got like 3,500 car carbonic gases coming out of you, created from carbonic acids that float through your body. And there's so much going on here that is not in a database form. And that, I understand databases. And trust me, everything will float to the top in a database. Absolutely guaranteed. So here, let's just take zinc. And I don't know if this is right. I'm just saying these things. Zinc, you got zinc and aluminum. One of them, if you got everybody's got this high side, they're they're sick. They got some kind of a problem. If they got too much zinc, I mean they're healthy. Let's say if they got a lot of zinc. If they don't have this, they're going to have let's say skin conditions or eyes or their toes are going. Some specific condition will arise from, or it might be a generalized condition. Zinc is used apparently in a lot of, in a lot of reactions. However. There will use, there's going to be a certain amount of it, and if you don't have that, you're not going to be healthy, let's say. You're going to be less healthy. And then the same, aluminum may be just the opposite. If you have a lot of it, you're sick. And if you don't have much of it, you're healthy. Zinc, you might have a lot of it, you're healthy, and not of it, much of it. No database, 100% guesses, no facts. We need to do this. Somebody's got to come up with this, this, you know, program. And then when you go to the doctor, all you got to do is say, here's a little feces, here's a little blood, here's a blow in his bag, you know, uh, whatever the case is, very simple. Harvest what's coming out of that guy, urine, what do you know, the whole thing, like they do now, only a little bit more sophisticated. When you get to the end, you say, okay, here's your statistics. You go online, you look and you say, everybody's healthy has this here, that, that, there. Well, my aluminum is way down here. Ooh, my zinc is, is uh, not here, you know, whatever it is. And then you got something to go by, because then when you add a little of this or take a little of this away, give them some of that kind of stuff or this kind of stuff, you know what it affected. Right now, you don't know what it affects. How do you feel? Feel better? Oh, hey, okay. then I healed you. How do you feel? I feel worse. Well, then there's no cure for you. <laughs> I, this, it's just, it really, that's what it boils down to as far as I can see at the moment. Now, if you go in there with a broken bone, you're in good shape. Big cut. You're probably in good shape until they start feeding you up with bacteria. I mean, with, uh, well, bacteria, first of all, and then they give you antibiotics to kill everything that can keep that stuff from invading you. We've got a lot of issues here, my friends. There's a lot of sickness. She's right about that. They're both right about that. There's a hell of a lot of people with a hell of a lot of problems. And until this happens, we're going to still have a hell of a lot more.